You guys can hear me, right? Somebody just put the chat panel. So projects due November twelfth. So all right, like two two weeks, two days. Through. Um. So for today, uh, let's let's start with the concrete rounds. Unless anybody is something. Urgent that needs to be covered. So we got three, and then I guess by extension, this will move into the projectiles and the VF Lake will just connect up what's happening. Um, maybe even start with the, we should start with the player weapon manager. Um, because by default, when you click play, pretty sure I looked at the player hierarchy. There actually is no gun, so it must be chosen. Yeah, there's no gun in here. So, let's see, player weapon manager, weapon switch state, up, down, put down, previous. Okay, so I guess it must be, um, I don't know what the hotkeys are, if it's the middle mouse scroll wheel, yeah, within positions, bobbing, frequency, aim amount, so a whole bunch of settings you can mess around with. Layer to set the game objects to, okay, the reason that usually I must, I guess the layer, usually it's not a rendering thing, it's a physics thing. Um, so we'll take a look at that, why it's on its own layer. And then we have some unity actions, if you remember our events. So switched weapon two, added a weapon, removed the weapon. Um, and these are all pass in a weapon controller. So I'm guessing on all the prefabs. There's a, yeah, there's a weapon controller. And some additional stuff, but the weapon controller is the main thing. Or the main script, I should say, weapon prefab. Weapon controller array. So we can have up to nine available weapon slots. Um, player input, character controller. So user to so the actual input, keyboard, mouse, and the character controller. Um, so it looks like, I don't know why that stuff's being fed into the weapons manager, but we might not have to care about it. Uh, a lot of positions when the weapon shoots and it recoils and the weapon switch state. So up here, the switch state can be there's four different states that a weapon switch can be in. And so when we start. All right, I'm looking for active weapon index. So an array index will start at zero and then move up. So negative one is like a common way of saying like an invalid state, uh, a state where it's like we haven't even started yet. It looks like the enum state. So an enum is uh, behind the scenes. These are just integers. So you see it's zero, one, two, three. So it's an easy way to like have a, a user, a human friendly state names behind the scenes are just integers that we switch between we're checking which state we're in so the weapon it switch state is down when we start i guess the weapon is down it's not like actively held up um get the player input some air handling player controller sure set the point of view to default um Right. 
this one. Uh, so the default point of view is 60 field of view when not aiming. So the camera uh, point of view is field of view 60. So this is coming from physical cameras. So as the field of view gets lower, it's more like a zoom lens. As it's higher, it's more like a um, wide angle and 60 is kind of considered like the default. What feels normal, it's like human vision of encapsulation field of view. Um, I guess there's like zoom in and zoom out when you're in different, maybe you zoom in when you're in like an aiming mode or something. Anyway, I just want to see what that was. Um, I'm switched to weapon. So I'm switched web to a, okay, this is the act, the, the event. So we're sub, when you see this, this means we're subscribing this function to this event. So on weapon switched is going to be. Let me go back up. Just go to it. All right. So whenever that event is called, this is the function that gets called for this because we're list this object is listening to that event system. Um, so here we're saying if if it's not a new weapon, if the new weapon is not null, then show the weapon. So it must be when you get a new event, like if you walk over a weapon pickup something um but in any case so for each weapon in starting weapons add a, the weapon so starting weapons so it's a list and okay it's a list up here of weapon controllers So starting weapons, okay, it's, in, it's an array of one, and it's referencing this prefab, this weapon controller, and this, this prefab, it's not even sitting in the scene. So it's saying this is the only weapon that we have when we start this blaster, and we don't even have it yet. Um, so in any case, it looks at that array, there's one, and it adds that script here to add weapon. So adds a weapon to our inventory. So if we already have this weapon in our inventory, um, then forget it. We just end the function. We don't add anything else. We go through our weapon slots and we find an, an empty one. And then that's where we add, we create an instance. We instantiate that prefab and its parent um, is that weapon socket in the hierarchy and then we position it at position rotation and, and we set up all of the um variables that are needed on the, the weapon controller script which we haven't gotten to yet but we figured it sets a bunch of stuff and assign the first person layer to the group. Get the children and add the layer to the same of the children. And just got spawned. If it's on added weapons, on oh, info. All right, so another event um, on added weapon. If it's not null, meaning we have subscribed to it, um, then we can invoke it. Oh, I'm sorry. If this event has subscribers so on um, added weapon is an event if other objects went through just like you saw before you can add methods to an event and those methods will get called so this is saying if that event has methods that people that other objects have subscribed to then invoke this event and it'll go through and call all of the methods that subscribe to it from other objects and it'll pass out pass in the weapon instance and the location on the um, on the weapon slots array. And then we're done. 
So, so that's how we get that first weapon added at the beginning. It's long script. So that add weapon and then switch the weapon on. It's true. So iterate all weapons and find the next valid weapon. So go through the whole array and find out valid weapon. And then that will be our active weapon. In this case, it's just a blaster. All right, that's just the start. So that's how we get the blaster and activate it. And then on update, go get the active weapon, get its weapon controller script. That's not null, and it's um, reloading. It's in the middle of reloading. We're just we're done. We don't need to do anything more work in the update loop. If it's not null and the weapon state is up, meaning it's it's active, it's in a ready state. Um, if the active weapon is not an automatic reload, and user input just read in that the user pressed the reload button and the the current ammo ratio of the active weapon um, is that it's less than one meaning the ratio it's less than 100 percent so it can be like it has 100 bullets in the clip and you shot fired once and you have 99 bullets and then you can, and you hit reload and the weapon is done automatic reload, then you can reload it. So anything less than one for a full clip, you won't reload it. But when you go through reload, then you're, you're not aiming the weapon that's false and the weapon runs its start reload animation and we're done with our update. Um, and then we're still within this larger if statement. So if the weapon is active, we have an active weapon. So let's handle our aiming down sites. Um, so if the input is get aim input held. Um, so that's under player input. Player input, get aim input held. So get access on the game pad. Or if you're holding keys, um, get access on game. Okay, so it's checking if you're holding down um, the aiming buttons on the gamepad, or I'm guessing this also maps to get button, whatever the aiming button on the keyboard is. So handle shooting. So um, we're checking if fired was just pressed down the fire button or if it's currently being held down or if it was just released um, the key on the keyboard the mouse and the gamepad then we figure out should we did we just fire if we did fire let's deal with accumulating rec uh, recoil so if it's not like if it's a single shot it's just one recoil but it's an automatic weapon that recoil keeps adding up keeps pushing you back um if we're not aiming and the active weapon is is null or not charging the active weapon either of these need to be true and that the weapon state is up or it's down um and if this is true and this is true and this is true then um, we see if we're going to switch our weapon. So check if the user is um, asking to switch a weapon. And then if the weapon input is not equal to zero, um, whatever that this, this input coming in from the user, if it's not zero, then switch the weapon input, switch weapon input. Well, it's already, I guess it could be negative zero or positive. Let's see what's 
locate to max is yeah, so it can be moved to the other negative zero or positive based on the gamepad, which direction you're switching your weapon. Okay, switch up or switch down. So if, it, if it's positive, we're gonna move up the list of weapons. Um, else. Sure, so I guess it's doing some other handling um, in case if it's moving in the negative. So, okay, this this one's just checking the keyboard. So if you're pressing one to zero or uh, one to nine, it looks like return that and then that lets you switch between the weapons. Then um, by default, we're not pointing at an enemy that checks it as an active weapon and then it shoots a ray cast out from that weapon and sees if it hits an enemy. And if it is, then it is pointing at this pool is true. But we haven't shot it. It's just seeing if you're pointing at it. That's it for update. Then late update, usually late updates are fixed update. Um, fixed updates usually deal with physics and late update is like if you want to intentionally do stuff after all update has been done. And in this case, it needs to override the enemy in our position. Sure. So a lot of like animations are overriding um, after other updates have been done for that frame. Great. Set the point of view of the camera and the weapon camera simultaneous, simultaneously. Sure. Set the FOV. So switch weapon. Went over that. Switch to open index. Switches to the given weapon index. If the new index is about sure. So just this just returning if it has this weapon or not. Checking on a prefab looks through the list. Updates weapon position for aiming transition. Sure. So this is probably this is probably that late update dealing with weapon bombs and aiming and recoils, switching. So it adds a weapon to our inventory. All right, went through that. So that's creating a weapon for the first time. Remove the weapon from the inventory. Destroy the weapon instance. Get the active weapon. We can get weapon at the slot. Well, so it's a big script that's doing a lot, but this is on the player's side. Uh, but I just went through the player weapons manager. Ultimately, I want to see how it's spawning the weapon blaster and how it's interacting with a weapon controller. So now I think we can take a look at one of these prefabs. So we have this massive weapon controller script sitting on the top, and I'm, I'm sure each prefab is going to have something a little different down here. So in this case, the blaster. All right. Um, this is dealing with overheat and cell handling, and I'm sure like the launcher has some different stuff like charged and cell handling. And shotgun's got just the cell handling. So these are these like secondary features on the gun, but we're really gonna look at the weapon controller. But um, let's see if there's anything else. No, just an audio can be played. And oops, just want to see what level by the output from my entire weapon shoot. It's this audio that gets played. Um, and so underneath here, let's see, we have the gun muzzle, it's just a location where the, the muzzle of the effects will get played. We got the aim point. So it's above it. This must be up where like the character's eye level is, where the camera for the player is. And then gun root. 
weapon mesh pistol, weapon primary. So these are all the root bones uh, indications for the mesh and the uh, bones. And now when I drill down here, here's finally the mesh render for one part of it anyway. So if I turn it on and off, and then the four sockets, that's what these things are that move up and down. So if I just go into one of them, here's the render for that, the material. And here's the, oh, so the little bubbles that are playing within it. There's the particle system for that. Each of them have this little bubbling system. And then the two front pieces and this overheat gets played when, when uh, smoke overheats. So I'll turn the main gun back on. So those are all the parts. Now, when we look at weapon controller, let's see what we have here. We have the name. It's across, but what I want to see is here's the root of the gun um, that's used for probably um, you know transfer position and rotation. Here's the muzzle when we fire the projectiles. This is probably where they'll be spawned from. Uh, the shot type, manual, automatic. Here's the actual projectile. So in this case, it's a projectile blaster that is going to be spawned from it. And here's for the other guns. Delay between shots, bullet spread, bullets per shot, recoil force, aim offset. So here's automatic reload. You don't need to hit reload, but I'm guessing I forgot the code if you could optionally do it if you want to. So there's no shell casings or ejection location where the shell casings come out. We have clip size 30. Um, ammo reload rate, reload delay, max ammo. Charging parameters for charging weapons only. Uh, then the audio and the visual. So here's the VFX blast. There's no animator on the weapon. We have some sound effects. Um, so, overheat behaviors, the, the color. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I want to see what was driving this thing. All right, so that overheat behavior is driving that. All right, so weapon controller. So we have an enum that um, the shoot the shot type can be manual, automatic, or charge. Um, so it's an enum, it's just a, a number, an integer behind the scenes. So crosshair data. So the, the sprite, so that's the, the 2D image for seeing the crosshair, the size of it, the color of it. Um, so I guess if I play. That's that little white thing in the middle. So if I go down to crosshairs, I seem to make it bigger. So sometimes this stuff gets instantiated. Um, it takes this data in at the beginning and then it gets used. So we try changing it here let's try making it like four times as big and make it red okay there it is all right i'm going to pop it back Uh, anyway, I'll bring that prefab back here.
Um, so this requires an audio source. Um, you get an error if there was an audio component on the game object when you assign this weapon controller. And then I kind of went through, here's all the publicly exposed parameters I was just going through earlier. A bunch of tooltips on everything. So, get ammo needed to shoot. This is interesting. So, they, these are what are called um, lambda expressions. Basically, you can um, create quick or anonymous functions. So, in this case, it makes sense. Like, all you wanted to, this just means return this variable. So, whenever somebody calls this public method, that has no input and has an integer output, it's just going to re return this. So when there's a lambda in a, um, and it's just like a stated variable, it's implied that that means return. This one is lambda as well. Um, both of these are named. Like this one, I get it's really shorthand. This one, get ammo needed to shoot. Uh, so shot type does not equal charged. Okay, so this is a, a good one. Operators called a ternary. So instead of saying if else, when you're doing something really quick, this is saying, um, oh, it's interesting. Uh, I see. So they did a really shorthand. Some people love doing really shorthand functions, sometimes hard to read. So this is saying, um, so a ternary operator is like a shorthand if else. So it's going to return true, false. Um, and so what it does is, um, let's see. so here's the first one and here's the second one. After the call like this, it means this is what's evaluated as true, this is what's evaluates the false. So it's saying um, if the shot type is not a charge, if this is true, return this. Um, else return that. So you see, it's sometimes hard to decipher. So you're saving some lines of code, but if it's hard to read, it's not worth doing. So if it is a charge shot, then we have to take the max of one or the ammo used on start charge and then divide that by max ammo times bullet shot. So I guess how long you're holding down the charge is figuring out how much ammo you're going to eat up to shoot. So get carry physical bullets. It's going to be that, right? All right. So cool um, is reloading. This is just saying it's a public. You can get this. You can any other object can read this, but you cannot set it. It's private. The internal only the objects coming from this class can set it. Um, a constant you can't change this string. It's always going to be called a, or the string is always attack. So if you know you're not going to change something, call it constant. That way, um, you know it'll get a warning if you try and change it later. So this is a queue of type rigid body, and it's the physical ammo pool. So I guess all the ammo. They all have rigid bodies because they're part of the physics system. And a and they're going to put them in a queue. So um, we have arrays, lists, stacks, queues. An array um, and lists you've probably been exposed to. Array is just a collection, a sequence, and you can move through the enumeration with the iterator. And a list is a little bit more flexible. You can always like add, remove stuff, and and um, and then stacks and queues are really useful in other ways where a stack is um, first in, first out. So whenever you're adding to one side, you're gonna remove from that same side. Think of a stack of papers. And then a queue, uh, first in, last out. So you add stuff to it and then you take from the other side. So you queue up your ammo and then the first stuff that was coming in, you're gonna take out when you need to start pulling ammo during your firing. 
So on a week, we start setting our member variables based on all these properties. The audio source, if it's a continuous shot sound, we have some settings here. If we're using physical bullets, um, we're going to make that queue of rigid bodies. In game object show, show. Oh, that's for the show casings. Oh, that's why the rigid bodies. So if we have the one show the shell, the ammo shell being ejected out, and the rigid bodies just so that they bounce around, and uh, we reset them, we we NQ them. So there's called DQ and NQ for for cues. Basically, add or remove from the queue. Um, add carryable physical bullet. All right. So this is just a little quick method that you can pass an integer and you add physical bullets to your count. So shoot your shell. This is still dealing with um, you're popping off, you're DQing these these shells if you're going to show them in the eject point port of the gun where they should be created and shot off, add a force to them. And then probably after a while, there's probably there's probably a script on the shelves that like destroys them or turns them off and adds them back into the queue. Play a sound effect. Use the audio utility to create sounds. Reload. Um, for dealing with physical shells, then we're resetting. Physical bullets is greater than zero. Then current ammo, take the minimum of those physical bullets out of the clip size, and then you're done reloading. Is reloading force. sure? Then you're playing the animation, reloading animation on the gun. Um, in this case, I didn't see an animator, so I don't think this gun has out oh, because it's got those charging things on it. Doesn't have a reload animation. Let's see if there's an anim no, there's no animator on launcher. There's no animator. All right. Again, it's like legacy code. It's uh, this will never. There's no one has animators, so it doesn't matter. Um, let's see if this one has. I think the the one that would have shell casings would be the shotgun. They don't have that. Nobody has shell casings, so all that code isn't being used either. So update ammo charge update. The Continuous. So a bunch of update methods are called. Um, and if delta time is greater than zero, which it would always be. So delta time is the time since the last update frame. It's so it's going to be a really small number, but yeah, it's always going to be greater than zero. So I don't know why they're checking this. Um, but anyway, somehow they're resetting muscle velocity. So, I mean, this is always going to be true. So, they're always resetting the muzzle velocity of the active weapons. All right. Um, update ammo. So, the update loop calls this. So, it's just seeing if it should. Um, so, if there's automatic reload and the last time shot plus the reload delay is less than. And they need some prompting. So we'll do this. This should really read. This. Somebody was. Oh, there's the. This should be right here. Somebody was too rushed with this. So it's hard to read. Right, it should read like that. If it's an automatic reload, and last time you shot plus the reload delay is less than the time, the current time, the time at the beginning of this frame, 
the time in seconds since the start of the game. So if the games were running for two minutes, that would be um, 60 plus 60 or 120. Um, I don't know. It's a little strange that they're looking at the apps. Usually you look at like time since the last action has happened, not since the beginning of the game, but whatever. And current ammo is less than max ammo, and you're not charging. It lets you reload the weapon over time. Okay. Limits ammo to this cool. Okay. Else is cooling. It's false. So this is only dealing with weapons that look like they charge over time. If max ammo is equals infinity. All right, I guess these and current ammo ratio. Okay. I guess this is a, a sanity check if like you can have infinity ammo on a charging weapon, you need to set this variable to this because the you know, math done in other areas um, get out of whack. So update charge was the next one. Um, so if it's charging, current charge is one, charge left, one minus current charge gain. All right, so it's it's doing some calculations based on the time since the last frame since this is done every update loop on how much charge should be added um, if we're in a charging state for a charging weapon. And update continuous shot sound. So if we're using a continuous shot sound, if the member variable wants to shoot is true. And the current ammo is we have at least one bullet. And we're currently not playing our audio source. Then play one shot and play one shot of continuous and then play the audio source. Else if it's playing, then play. I guess it's doing like some audio mixing to make cool sound effects so show weapon sure so get the weapon root and turn it on whatever so this could be true or false and it turns the weapon on or off you can see it uh, use ammo so if you're, you're firing you know lower your current ammo and also if you're dealing with um, shells that are being shown being uh, released and update that as well. And then this was the last time that we shot is the current time. So it handles shot inputs. So as you put down, held or up. So this is checking if the user is holding down the shooting button, if it's being held down currently, or if they just released it. And based on all those user inputs, it could tell the different states. Um, that the weapon is in. So if it's manual, should we try and shoot? If it's automatic, you know, should we try to begin charging with a charge weapon? So if we release charge and if the weapon shot automatically when it's fully charged. Okay. So it's saying, did the user release charge while it's charging or did the weapon like max out it's fully charged and it should just shoot when it's fully charged? And then a lot of these we're calling the try shoot up here. So if we have um, some ammo and it's time since last shot plus a delay between shots is less than the current time. That, that's why they're saying time dot time because the last time shot is being set as time dot time when when that situation out of sets up. So handle shoot and then reduce our ammo. Okay. Try begin charge. Are you not charging? And is your current ammo? So this is nice how they put the ands on different um, lines. So I could say if this is true and this is true and that's true, then we can go forward and use up some ammo and 
we can charge. Try release, similar, try to release, shove, charge, then handle our shot. So bullets per final shot equals the shot type. So if it's a charge, we're going to take the current charge times the bullets per shot. Okay, so we have a ternary operator here. So um, it, we're saying um, the bullets shot is equal to, well, is the shot type going to be equal to a charge type? If that's true, then we do this. If it's not, if it's a man, if it's a single shot or automatic shot, then we do that. So spawn bullets or random direction. Uh, so if you have a spread, so especially with shotguns, you might introduce a spread and you have to randomize the bullet trajectories within that, that, that spread, that cone. Um, and should there be a muzzle flash? So is this variable, if it's not null, it's a prefab for our muzzle flash VFX, then we're gonna instantiate it at the muzzle location. Um, and for some reason we wanna unparent the muzzle flash. I guess we don't want it to move with the gun. I guess once it flashes, it should just stay in that location and then we just destroy it. Physical bullets, nobody's using that. So player shot VFX, set our time for our last shot, and trigger animations if there is any, which none of them have. And then we call some events. So if anyone is listening to on shoot, we invoke those methods. If anyone is listening to on shoot process, we invoke those methods. So that's what this little question mark means first. That means call this event. Only if anybody is listening to it, and then we can invoke it. So get shot direction within spread. Okay. So this must be called up here during the spread to figure out the spread. Um, yeah, so that's the weapon. So I went through the hierarchy and this is the main um, script. And then this is the projectile that gets created. In this case for the blaster. And looks like it has script on it as well. So this is the blaster, it's super long for some reason. Um, here's the mesh of it, shader on it, and here's the tip of the projectile, but there's no scripts on it. And there's just a script on the root of the projectile. So, See, there's a bunch of public radius, the, the, the root of it, the tip of it, the lifetime, what the effects will be played when it hits something, how long should that be alive for, what's offset, what sound effect, what layers should it hit, what's its movement speed, should gravity have impact on it, uh, what's its damage, is it area effect, and there's some debug tools with it. So that's what all this was. Then we have some member variables hidden, private, the list. So on enable, so when it first becomes enabled and active, we have a wake on enable, start. They're all used uh, slightly different ways. So get the projectile base um, on shoot. So this right here. Um, on shoot gets called by it. So it's parent class is projectile base. 
So here's the unity action, the event called on shoot. And in the parent class, there's this shoot method. Passes in the weapon controller, figures out the position, direction, also velocity, and then it just evokes this method for anyone who cares to listen. So on enable, he'll get its parent class, go subscribe to its event. And when the event gets called, it will call its own method. It's a little weird, but whatever reasons they decided to develop this way, that the object will go to its parents' class's event and subscribe to it. I mean, it's already your parents' class. I don't know. Usually you call a subscribe to events of classes that have nothing to do with you, but this is my parent. So I said I could very easily listen to it. Sure. So I'm subscribing to event on my parent. And then I destroy myself at my max lifetime. See these projectiles just set to destroy themselves right when they get enabled at a certain amount of time. Then there's on shoot. So you have all these variables get set. You have your colliders of your owner. So I guess the gun. Um, make sure you don't collide with your gun in the player. Go get the player weapons manager. Go figure out if there's some overrides, the muzzle position, the trajectory correction. And go do a ray cast out and see if you're going to hit something. And if you do, call on hit which is down here. So I kind of covered some of this stuff in earlier lectures. So on update, we just keep moving, take its velocity, the time, add it to its position, do any some corrections that need to be dealt with, and go hit detection. Every frame, go do a ray cast out, see if you hit something. See if it's valid. If so, call on it. Yeah, I remember said a couple last time. So we figure out if the whatever we're hitting, if even if it's valid, we do a secondary check to see, make double make sure that it's if that's a valid hit. And then on hit, um, we do damage. I remember I was messing around with this area on damage uh, for something else. Like I said, delayed area of damage. Go figure out who we should hurt. Go figure out if we should play VFX or sound effect. And here's some debugging adjustments. And yeah, so we, we moved from the top player's weapon manager down to the weapon controller on the weapon, down to the projectile manager if you want to call it the projectile behavior on the projectile. And that all combined uh, is, a, is how the weapons are working with the players. Any questions on that? All right, well, um, that wraps up the lecture today. And um, unless anyone has any suggestions, I can look at how the enemy AI is working. Friday. So you can hang out if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to stop the recording. Get some good questions. All right, stop it.